Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Former Mossad chief Meir Dagan says it was time for Israel to stop criticizing the United States over the nuclear agreement, stressing the problem is Iran, not President Barack Obama. France announces it will begin reconnaissance missions over Syria and is considering launching airstrikes against Islamic State militants in the country. Former Mossad chief Meir Dagan said it was time for Israel to stop criticizing the United States over the nuclear agreement reached between Iran and the P5 plus 1, the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain and Germany, stressing that the problem is Iran, not President Barack Obama. I think it was a strategic decision by Israel to adopt the policy against the United States. The problem is Iran, not President Obama. And uh, I'm truly sorry to see this conflict reaching to places that I think that are against the interests of Israel and against the interests of the United States. If I'm referring to the regional interests of the United States in the region, I think that their agreement with Iran created a new phenomenon of mistrust between many of the countries in the Middle East against the United States. Speaking at the annual conference of the International Institute for Counterterrorism in Elzlia, the former Mossad chief accused Prime Minister B. Netanyahu of making a strategic decision to adopt a policy against the United States and called to end it as soon as possible. This long approach against the United States it's time to end it. Dagan is a fierce critic of Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu's hardline policies regarding the Islamic Republic of Iran. He vocally opposed the prospect of an Israeli military strike against Tehran's nuclear facilities that Netanyahu is said to have supported. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia, which is considered to be the main regional rival of Iran, said it is satisfied with U.S. President Barack Obama's assurances about the nuclear agreement with the Islamic Republic and believes the accord will contribute to security and stability in the Middle East. Speaking after a White House meeting between President Obama and Saudi King Salman in Washington, Saudi Arabia's top diplomat, Foreign Minister Adel al Jubeir, said Obama had assured Salman that the agreement would prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. Obama was quoted as saying the agreement includes inspections of Tehran's military sites and has a provision for snapback of economic sanctions if the Islamic Republic were to violate the agreement. The uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was fat satisfied with these assurances after having spent the last uh, uh, two months uh, consulting with our allies in Europe and other places with regards to this agreement. And we believe that this agreement uh, will contribute to security and stability in the region by preventing Iran from acquiring a nuclear capability. And we hope that uh, the Iranians will avail themselves of this opportunity in order to use the openness to the world and the additional income that they receive to uh, fund domestic development uh, rather than engage in nefarious activities in the region. Saudi Arabia has been a strong critic of the nuclear agreement, demanding assurances by the international community regarding Tehran's nuclear aspirations as well as its ongoing regional activities in which the Islamic Republic supports Shiite Muslim militant groups that are battling Saudi Arabia's Sunni Muslim allies, among others in Yemen and Syria. And we hope uh, that this will be a turning point in the history of Iran and that Iran will act as a responsible neighbor and that Iran will respect the principles of non-interference and that Iran uh, will cease uh, supporting terrorism and will cease stoking sectarian fires. Now with regard to the ongoing fight against the Islamic State, Britain announced it has killed two of its own nationals who had been fighting for ISIL and plotting attacks on British soil in the UK's first airstrike in Syria. Now Mr. Speaker, in recent weeks it's been reported 
that two ISIL fighters of British nationality who had been plotting attacks against the UK and other countries have been killed in airstrikes. Both Junaid Hussain and Rayad Khan were British nationals based in Syria who were involved in, activity, in actively recruiting ISIL sympathisers and seeking to orchestrate specific and barbaric attacks against the West, including directing a number of planned terrorist attacks right here in Britain, such as plots to attack high-profile public commemorations, including those taking place this summer. Despite not having a parliamentary mandate to take military action in Syria, the British Prime Minister emphasized to lawmakers that as an act of self-defense, he has authorized the strikes against British nationals. Today I can inform the House that in an act of self-defense and after meticulous planning, Rayard Khan was killed in a precision airstrike carried out on the 21st of August by an RAF remotely piloted aircraft while he was traveling in a vehicle in the area of Raqqa in Syria. In addition to Rayad Khan, who was the target of the strike, two ISIL associates were also killed, one of whom, Ruhul Amin, has been identified as a UK national. British warplanes have launched regular airstrikes against ISIL fighters in neighboring Iraq in recent months and flown drones over Syria to gather military intelligence. But unlike some countries in a U.S.-led international coalition, it does not generally target the Islamic State in Syria. Prime Minister Cameron stressed he would not join coalition strikes in Syria without first winning parliamentary approval to do so. More on Syria, France announced it will begin reconnaissance missions over Syria and is considering launching airstrikes against Islamic State militants in that country. Ma responsabilité, c'est d'assurer que nous puissions être informés au mieux des menaces qui pèsent sur notre propre pays, pour y faire face. C'est pourquoi j'ai demandé au ministre de la Défense que dès demain puissent être menés des vols de reconnaissance au-dessus de la Syrie. Ils permettront d'envisager des frappes contre Daesh en préservant notre autonomie de décision et d'action. President François Hollande ruled out, however, the possibility of sending French ground troops to the conflict-stricken country. Aujourd'hui, en Syrie, ce que nous voulons connaître, savoir, c'est ce qui se prépare contre nous et ce qui se fait contre la population syrienne. Aussi, ai-je décidé qu'il y aurait dès demain des vols de reconnaissance en lien avec la coalition, parce que c'est la condition pour que nous puissions disposer de la capacité d'intervenir sous cette forme. Et puis ensuite, selon les informations que nous recueillerons, les renseignements que nous aurons collectés, la reconnaissance que nous aurons pu faire, nous serons prêts. À faire des frappes. France was the first country to join the U.S.-led coalition carrying out airstrikes on Islamic State positions in Iraq, but has refrained from attacks in Syria against the Islamist group, fearing that would benefit Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The conflict in Syria has thus far, according to the United Nations, claimed the lives of more than 220,000 people. But according to other reports, the unrecorded number of people killed in the four-year-old conflict is closing on half a million. Thank you for watching us. You can also watch us at TV7, IsraelNews.com or TV7.fi. For any comments, please send your emails to IsraelNews at TV7.fi. For more updates from Israel and the region, please join our Facebook page at TV7 Israel News. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.